What's up, my YouTube people? Uh, well, there's no secret in what I carry every day. It's my Glock 19 for my EDC or everyday carry. I'm bringing this, this video to you. I just had a thought. I know I've already shot a similar video, but not quite on uh, specifically what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, this is going to be really quick because it's about 12 a.m. and I got class in the morning. And I've been meaning to shoot this all day, so I'm going to go ahead and knock it out now. Because I told everybody I was bringing it to them tonight. So, sometime this, tonight, this video will be on YouTube in the AM hour. Um, what we're talking about today is mods that matter. Or, excuse me, modifications that matter on your gun. Now, obviously, I have a Glock. But, you may have another gun. But what we're going to be talking about, when we talk about mods that matter, I want you to think about this. Okay, when we say modifications that matter, these are things that increase your overall basics or your overall fundamentals of shooting. All right, nothing else is needed or should be on your gun other than things that increase your overall skill. What I mean by that? Well, the things we're going to talk about: grip, okay, sights. True control, what helps my true control? My flashlight, what makes things easier? Okay, things of that nature. So, we're going to be talking about these little simple things and some improvements that I think you can make to your guns um, to get it to that point where you need to be. Now, I like to think of shooting and modifications this way. So, you go out to a nice, nice store and you buy yourself a thousand uh, thread count sheets um, of Egyptian cotton, okay? You bring them home and you put them on a $20 mattress. What's the problem with that? Yeah, as you may be sleeping on a smooth, soft, comfortable sheet, <laughs> your thumb mattress is still cost you $20, all right? Which is going to result in what? The end result is going to be tarnished. You're going to have a bad result in the end. Your back is still going to hurt. Things like that are still going to exist. Well, the same goes for your darn gun. You go out and spend a thousand dollars on your sights, your grips, your modifications, all this stuff, and you can't shoot in the first place. None of all that little bull crap matters. Don't go dress up your gun before you have the fundamentals, fundamentals of shooting down. If you do not have the fundamentals of shooting down, Work on that first, then come back and start working on modifications to increase your overall game. We do not mod out our gun and then run to the uh, gun range and then start making excuses as to why those modifications are not helping you to work any better. It's very simple. A comes before B as far as B becomes before C. You have to do the appropriate things to get the appropriate results. All right? Next thing is, uh, basically, if I had to tell you guys something, give you some guys some, some great, great advice, leave your dog gun alone, learn how to shoot, okay? Because without learning how to shoot or learning your fundamentals, you're never going to be good with your modifications. So leave the dog thing alone, all right? Don't waste your time going out there fixing up this thing all fancy and you can't even shoot, all right? Now, Mr. Turner, what do you mean by can shoot? Well... I'm <clears throat> with the same practice I've heard somebody else tell me. If you can't hit a nine inch plate three times in one second at seven yards, you can't handle that gun. Okay? So, either you need to reduce in caliber or shoot better until you get to that point. Yes, three shots, one second. And that is like from a ready position or from a first shot position. Okay, your split time should be 0 .33, 0 .33, 0 .33, 0 .33. If you cannot do that accurately with the gun that you're shooting, you need to change your gun before you try to start modifying your gun. Okay, if you can do that, you're probably a pretty good shot. Now, do you have to be at that skill level? Not necessarily, but it's a good way for you to tell yourself that I can shoot, now I can start doing things to my gun. Alright, moving right along. Um... If you can't find the accessories that you're looking for, or the modification that you're looking for, freaking design it. 
Design it and sell it yourself. I get tired of people saying, well, I can't find this for my gun. Design it. Become an entrepreneur. Make some money. That's what all these other people do. They, they find modifications that fit for them, and they go sell them. How do you think, I mean, all these big manufacturers become so popular? Because they are just thinking like a gunfighter, and they're saying to myself, well, what can I put on this gun that is going to increase my overall skill? If you can't find it, go freaking make it yourself, okay? Um, another thing that I hate about modifications, and... I'll tell anybody this. Modifications create excuses. All right. Now you can blame things on a gun that was never had that never had any problems in the first place. Well, if I put night sights on here and the night sights go dim and I try to shoot it in a, in a dim light, now I'm going to blame that I can't see my freaking sights. Okay. If I put a super grip on here, now I'm going to blame it on this because my hands got real sweaty. Okay. I put a super duper uh, one pound trigger on here and I'm going to blame that because the gun went off and shot me in my leg. You can't create excuses for your problems. Don't even try it. If you're going to do that, don't modify your gun. Okay, leave it as is. Now, while we're at, let's go ahead and talk about these modifications so I can go to sleep. <laughs> first things first, what does the fundamentals of, uh, fundamentals of shooting start? Where do they start? With a proper grip. Okay. If you look at the Glock 19 Generation 4, they already have some great modified um, grip handles here. Let's see if I can get this thing to focus on that. Okay, it's like basically little bitty dots or, or squares that protrude from the grip. Now, for me, that's good enough. What I found is that anytime I get sweaty, this thing does not move without me having to put anything else on there. Now, there are other places that you can go, like uh. Uh, one of my buddies just told me, and I'm not going to share his name because I don't know if you want me to or not, but he just sent his gun off to this uh, custom uh, specialty place where they're going to put a tree bark um, design on here, but it's basically going to be a stippled uh, gun on the grips. Those stippling grips have two different types or, or two different excuses or problems. One is they work really good and they fit in your hand and everything is great. Or two, somebody doesn't do it correctly and it ends up scratching your skin or scratching up your hand and you have to sand it down. So, regardless, it's very good to have a grip that is going to help you to hold the gun into your hand without sliding. Okay? It just makes for a, a better situation when it comes to sweaty hands during stress and all the other stuff. Rain, whatever. Remember, you will not get the opportunity to choose the conditions in which you'll have a gunfight. So, you can choose what to put on your gun. Um, number two, we have a grip. We're going to come up and, and, and align what? Now we're going to align our sights. All right, once that grip comes up, we've got sight picture, sight alignment, sights. The modification I can tell you about putting on your gun for sights is to have a nice set of steel sights. Okay, I don't care if they're Metrolite, Trudicon, Blah, 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 whatever, okay, Glock, whatever, okay, your sights need to be steel sights, why, when I'm in fighting in a gunfight, I want these bad boys to stand up, okay, I want them to stay in place, and I want them to perform for me, okay, plastic sights or polymer sights have a tendency to break real easy when being holstered or unholstered, they have a tendency to break on one-handed manipulations, and they have a tendency to break at other times, so, with steel sights, Although human made and all this other stuff still give you more of a benefit than um, your polymer or plastic sights. Now, I know you guys expect me to say, put some night sights on that thing. Let me tell you something. Night sights are great, but again, if you don't know how to shoot in the first place, night sights ain't going to help you. Okay? So, night sights would be my secondary option, but I always start with a nice standard set of steel sights. Okay? Whoever manufactures your gun, I'm sure they have a, a standard set of steel sights that um, they will install for you. Glock, they're only $20. Okay, if you get a regular set of steel sights without any type of uh, color or anything else on them, $20. Can't beat it. Okay, once we have sight picture, sight alignment, what do we move to next? We move to our trigger. Okay, 